Hi, Scott with FDJTool.com. We're often asked lots of questions about jeweler's loops, so I thought I'd give you some information and start by showing you how to use a loop. When you use a jeweler's loop, you remove the cover and slide it back like so. You can use this as a handle, put your finger through if you like, or not, really just whatever's comfortable for you. But when using the loop, you don't use it like a magnifying glass. You don't hold it down here and look through the lens to see uh, the object because you're just not going to get a good view. They're designed to be held up close to your eye, like this. Now, when using a loop, it's a good idea, I've seen a lot of people do it, and I do it myself, is to use your thumb and rest it against your cheek like so and hold the loop in front of your eye. What that does is it, it helps you stabilize the loop in order to see through it without it moving around and making it hard to see. The second thing is you have to bring the item that you're going to view up close to the lens like this. Now I like to touch my fingers together so that I have a nice stable place to hold the piece that I'm looking at. If I didn't and I tried to hold the piece out like this, it's, it's actually hard, believe it or not, to hold that item in place so that I can see it in focus or without it moving around. So by resting it against my fingers like so, I have a nice stable place to hold the piece and view it. And just by tilting my hands back and forth like this, or just ever so slightly moving them, I can change the focus of what I'm looking at on the piece and get a much better view. Now as I'm doing this, you may also notice that I'm keeping my other eye open. And that's important because when using a loop a lot of times, keeping that eye open will actually prevent eye strain and keep you from getting headaches. And it really doesn't impede your view at all. In fact, you don't even notice that your other eye is open when using the loop. And that's how you use a jeweler's loop. So you're going to run into hundreds of models of loops out there. And I'm going to tell you about three of them that you're going to run into. You're going to run into something called the singlet. Probably won't hear that word a lot, but basically it's a, it's a loop with one lens in it. And they tend to be very inexpensive loops because all they do is magnify. They're going to make your image a little bit distorted, but if all you need to do is make what you see bigger, then this is a type of loop that's going to work best for you. And you know what? They're pretty inexpensive, so they're easy on the pocketbook. From there, you're going to run into something called a doublet. A doublet is basically a loop that has two lenses in it. And those two lenses are glued together and what that does is it helps to correct that image and make it much sharper. So not only do you get a bigger view, but you're going to get a much clearer view than the single lens magnifier. From there, you're going to run into something called the triplet. The triplet, just like the name sounds, is three lenses that have been glued together. And not only do you get a magnified view, you're going to get a much sharper, crisper view than the singlet or the doublet, but it does something else. It corrects the color of the item that you're looking at. It. So you're going to see precise color of the magnified item. Now why is that important? Well, in the jewelry industry, when you're looking at diamonds and gemstones, you very much want to see the right color of the item. And that's so important that the triplet has become the standard magnifier for the jewelry industry. Because we know that when you're looking at something like a diamond or a gemstone, you want to see clear color, you want to see clear image, because those kinds of things help determine what you're going to buy or sell something for. So basically, you need to decide how you're going to use your loop. If you're just going to magnify an image to see something bigger, then a singlet or a doublet's going to work good for you. But if you need to not only magnify, but see accurate, clear color, like looking at diamonds and gemstones, then the triplet is the loop that you need. Something else to think about when looking at loops is its magnification. In the jewelry industry, 10 power is the standard for triplets and, and other magnifiers. However, some people are looking for 20 power loops, 30 power loops, even stronger loops. And with those high magnifications, you can run into a, maybe not difficulties, but some situations that you should be aware of. When using a 10 power loop, when you hold it up to your eye, in order to see the item you're looking at, you only need to hold it about an inch away from the lens in order for it to be in focus. And that's great, gives you enough some room to move around, no problem, quite a comfortable situation. However, when using something like a 20 power loop, that stronger magnification forces you to bring that item into about a half an inch away from your lens. And what that does is it 
decreases your field of view greatly so now it's very hard to move the item without it going completely out of my view from the lens. If I were to be using a 30 power, I'd have to bring it into even closer than that, 40 power, heavens, I would think it would almost be touching the lens in order to see something with a magnification that strong. So that's something to consider. How easy is it going to be for you to use your loop with such high power magnifications? The other thing to consider is the size of the lens. In a 10 power lens, you can often get very nicely sized lenses in order to see the item that you're looking at. It's a great uh, field of view on this particular magnifier. However, as magnifications get larger, on a 20 power, you can notice that the size of my lens has decreased dramatically. And that's generally to keep the cost of loops down. The higher magnification means that the lenses are going to be much more expensive. And in order to keep costs down, the lenses tend to be smaller and smaller. So a true 20 power lens is going to be a much smaller lens. A true 30 power lens is going to be even smaller than that. The obstacles in that situation, well, as I said before, when examining something with my 20 power loop, the field of view becomes very, very small, and I don't have a lot of wiggle room in order to, to move around, so this particular ring is taking up the entire view in my lens. 30 power with an even smaller lens, although I'm trying to look at increase, very small detail, I don't have a lot of move, room to move around. I can see a large field of view. Also, with loops in general, whether they be a larger lens in a 10 power triplet or the smaller lens in a 20 power triplet, you will get some slight distortion and it generally happens around the very outside of the lens. And that's perfectly normal because you're only going to be looking at the center, of, center view of your lens anyway. Well, what happens in higher magnifications is that although there may be the same amount of distortion in each of the lenses, your field of view is much smaller in a 20 power or 30 power lens, so that little bitty distortion in a small lens ends up being a lot bigger. So now you can only usually look into the very, very center of a high powered loop, something like a 20 or 30 power. So those are just a couple of situations you really need to be aware of when looking at high-powered loops and determining whether those are going to work best for you in your situation. Because they've become so popular these days, I thought I would mention how LEDs are making their way into the magnifying world. LEDs, like this one, can be mounted right on this loop. You can get one that even has two LEDs mounted on it. In fact, there are models out here like this one that have six LEDs built into it. Ones like this have LEDs all the way around the lens in order to give you nice even lighting of the item that you're looking at. This even has a diffuser built into it to cut down on the glare of the item that you're looking at. What are they going to think up next? Well, probably UV lights built into your loop in order to view floor items that fluoresce when you're seeing them under magnification. Well, whether you need one this fancy or one with just one or two lights or no lights at all, I hope that our tips have been able to help you decide on which loop is going to work best for you. Whoa, 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 we can't stop the video yet. There's something really cool i got to show you. Check this out. I wanted to show you our ring under the 10 power triplet. Check this out. With the white lights, you can see everything. And that diffuser ring really cuts down on the glare. Now switching over to UV light, we can see any stone that fluoresced under this. And that's really cool. Yeah, pretty neat, huh? Alright, now we can end the video. My name is Scott with FDJTool.com.